Welcome to the only place where real, raw, and vulnerable conversations happen with IFBB Bikini Pros to give you an inside look at their struggles, strategies, mindset, passions, and all of life beyond the stage. This podcast is made to inspire, motivate, and remind competitors and the average gym goer that even the most extreme lifestyles and elite athletes have their ups and downs. Thank you so much for tuning in today. I'm your host, Celeste Rains Turk, and now it's time for the Confessions of a Bikini Pro podcast. Welcome to the Confessions of a Bikini Pro podcast. I'm your host, Celeste Rains Turk, and on this episode, you'll be hearing from a total firecracker who has been competing for six years, just made her pro debut, and has her eyes on the Olympia stage. Today's guest is Marie Acosta. How you doing, girl? Hi, I'm good. Thanks for having me on here. Absolutely. So I got to ask this question because I'm asking everyone it. So what is it that's going through your head in that special moment right before you hit the stage and showcase all your hard work? Oh man, so many. It, it kind of, it's like, kind of like a blank calmness, I would say. For me, it's like a calmness and a, I just kind of take that time and I just, uh, I can't even step away from like the line of girls and then I kind of just meditate and I just ask God to like, you know, keep me calm and collective and not make a fool of myself on stage. And (laughs) it kind of just sets the tone, you know? That's amazing. That's really, really powerful. And so um, you mentioned stepping away from the girls and that was actually something I was thinking about because you competed for five years as an amateur, you got your pro card and we'll talk a little bit more about that. But something that, that makes me think of is when you were making your pro debut and you were backstage with the pros and this was your first time in that kind of element, what, what did you notice was different than in the IFBB oh, than that, the NPC? <laughs> that, that show now I it felt like my first show ever because, uh, it was just so, it was so surreal, and uh, I was just back there, and I'm like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, I'm mean, like, it just felt so surreal, and you could see that on stage, and like, I, you could tell I was nervous, and even my mom from the audience, she was like, what was up with you? She was like, you were so nervous, you can tell, that wasn't like the same, but then after that first show, and then I did the second one, it was like nothing, it was just normal, you know, because like, Mm. you kind of put these girls on a pedestal, and you're, you watch them for so long, but then when you're backstage, and like, we're all the same, like, no one's better than anyone, you know, they just might be seasoned more, and might have done more shows than I, or, you know what I mean, they might look a little bit better, more conditioned, but honestly, we're all the same, we're just people, so, (laughs) I mean, what's a, what's a title, so, after I got that out the way and got all the butterflies like shooken off, then I was good. But the first, yeah, the pro debut, it was really nerve wracking. I felt like a, like it was my first show all over again, but it was, it was a good feeling. <laughs> I, you know, I, I loved everything of it. That is so cool. I mean, I, I definitely agree with you. There's that, that tendency for amateurs to put professionals in any sport on a pedestal because we admire all the grind that they've put in to get there and I think that there's that like defining level of success that we've set and it's like that's a new level and then I can only imagine when you're like oh my gosh now I'm on that level that I've been striving for for so long um that would Mm be very surreal and of course like you'd feel like completely in a new element so when when you got your pro card, what do you think was setting you apart from the other competitors? Because there is that grind that it takes. But what is it that you think set you apart from the other competitors when you actually achieved it? Uh, well, to be honest, I had done a show June 3rd, uh, eight weeks prior to uh, nationals. And uh, I had placed top four actually in like a group of 20 something girls so uh I mean and I'm going from the top four and then right after that prep so I had done an eight-week prep for that show and then directly I took like maybe four four or five days off and then went directly back into another eight-week prep for nationals so I was like in legit like 100% on it so I was kicking butt in the gym and 
I did a little bit of extra cardio from what my plan had said from the coaches, just because mm-hmm. I wanted to like get you know, 110% and make sure that, you know, all this money that I'm spending into the show that is go, it's not just being like, you know, I want to make sure I'm giving it my all. If I'm going to be <laughs> spending all this money and putting in all the time, I might, might as well, you know, and it was a, a mental, um, really a mental challenge more than anything. But once I got past that mentality of like, you know, knowing that I can do it, my body gave up. <laughs> like mm. I, so I was, I think four weeks into the prep for nationals and I had broken out in shingles, which I've never had before. Wow. So I went to the doctor and um, they told me, they're like, well, it's either you're really uh, stressed out and have like a low immunity or yeah, you just have a low immune system. And I'm like, no, it's just probably the stress on my body. But like mentally, I was okay. Like I was going, I was ready to do it. And they just put me on some medicine and it cleared up right away. But then, so it was a Friday, a peak week for nationals. I got strep throat. So my body was no. just like giving out. Yeah. So I went to the doctors and he made me rest for the one full day. And usually I do a cardio on my rest day. Mm-hmm. So I had to sit that out. And um, the antibiotics worked, and he said I can go in again the next day, just take one day full off. So I did. And, uh, yeah, my body was just going through it. But then now, like, this last prep for my pro show, it was pretty intense, too. I did another 16-week prep. But it wasn't as bad. My body had adjusted, so it Mm. wasn't that bad. Wow. Yeah, you know, you hear a lot about how – worked girls get and I mean any competitor as well but specifically speaking to bikini competitors I know for myself in my last show I did a back-to-back show and I like basically could have like I got so sick after my second show and I know that it was like the depletion the hours of work for back-to-back not Mm -hmm. having a lot of water then water loading manipulating the food like all that stuff that goes into it plus working, right? You mentioned spending lots of money and and time on this. And I I feel like it's different too when you're a natural athlete and you don't take anything to, you know, make you go, 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 go. It's just Mm. naturally. I mean, yeah, you take supplements and stuff, but you're not, you know, so it's a little, you have to work a little bit harder, but yeah. And then I go to school. I actually am not working right now. I'm just going to school. So that's a plus, but it is school full time. (laughs) <laughs> That's no joke. What are you studying? Yeah, uh, actually, I'm studying kinesiology right now as an undergrad. And then after that, two more years, and then I want to enter in physical therapy. Oh, my gosh, that's amazing. You're going to make such a positive impact on them. I already can tell. Well, the I fact that so. you're, Thanks. yeah, of course. I mean, you, you're an example. You take the time to study. You've, you've put that time into it. It's going to pay off. and. Um, I also think like that that kind of goes to the point of there are other things outside of competing that people spend their life on. And yeah, um, for sure. we miss that because Instagram, it's like we are like, for example, it's like celestial fit. It's like underscore fit or it's just my fitness Instagram. It's like, but what what is it that we actually are doing outside of our life? So I'd love to know from you, you're not working right now beforehand when you were working what were you focusing on what are you currently spending your time and energy on outside of school like what's your life look like outside of the gym mm. <laughs> my well, my life is the gym no no right I have school, I'm married to work. and uh luckily my husband he loves to work out and all that too so you know when our date night will consist of just like watching a movie and going to the gym together so that's pretty convenient for both of us that we mm. live the same lifestyle and family. So we'll take a day out and make that day to like hang out with the family because, you know, he's really busy. He works and, uh, and I'm busy in school. So we take a one day out to take time to visit our family because you know how hectic it is when you have to meal prep and you have to go to the gym and you have to do your cardio. Like if you're, family's not going to the gym and doing cardio with you, then you don't really see them. And I'm a big family person. And I love, you know, I love my mom and I love my brothers and sisters and my nephews. So I really have to make it a priority to take time to see them once in a while, because when you're in prep mode, you are kind of just like, for me anyways, it's like 
one zone and that zone is a set schedule, you know? Mm-hmm. Yes, I know. And I it, always it say like, hard, it's hard to juggle, uh, being on prep and like having a social life. Yeah. I don't really think you can have a social life being on prep. No, it's true. I would agree with you. I think like it, there's so much that goes into it where, you do have to put almost everything in your calendar. You get that plan from your coach and you're like, I've got fasted cardio on this day, but I, I got to get X, Y, and Z done for school. And then I have to go to the gym and, oh, I have to do cardio as well. So I have to plan this much time. Like it's a constant thing and it's consuming our thoughts. So when we get those opportunities, like you said, to really spend that time with our family and enjoy a date night and do those things outside of the gym, it's great, but it's also really awesome when the people in our life are passionate about those things. And I know your husband is super supportive of you. I was, I was actually looking through your Instagram and I was thinking like, wow, they have such a great relationship, but that's, you know, it appears this way. And so I'm curious, like mm-hmm. how has you stepping on stage and becoming a competitor over the years really impacted your relationship and marriage? Uh, Well, actually, when I first met him, he's the one who actually nudged me to hire Team Edge. And uh, if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't have done it. I was kind of like, I had a coach before, but then after him, I kind of was doing it on my own for a couple of shows. And then my husband was like, well, if you're wanting to take this serious, then why don't you hire a coach? And so I looked into coaches and then I just really gravitated towards Team Edge. And he's like, yeah do it he's like hire them and so I did and then you know I started progressing in my shows and placements and then within like I think my fourth show I turned pro with them so it was pretty awesome and he's Mm. so supportive and it actually strengthened us because he's seen me at my worst you know during peak week and like just tired all the time he's so supportive and now he's caught on though but because it motivates him like he sees like my drive and how hard I work and and every time we go to the show he always gets like a little motivated he's like maybe I'll do it maybe I'll do it because he works out and stuff and so finally this year he's prepping so oh yay, my gosh that's so excited. cool you're doing a show together that's gonna be amazing yeah I'm really excited about that wow that's so cool because he already lives that lifestyle like you said so now it's just like that next level Yep, taking it to the next level and see what you're really made of because that's Mm -hmm. what competing really does to you is see what you really got going on. That's so true. When I decided to compete, I remember I was like, I'm into fitness. I already meal prep. I already eat like (laughs) this. Yeah, no, it doesn't compare. Like competing is the most extreme form of fitness I've ever even. It really is. Yeah, I don't think there's anything else. (laughs) If you're at your tip top most shape though, like the best shape you've ever been in your life and you feel the greatest. And this, I'm, this is like the middle of prep, I would say, because we all I was going to say, well, what? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the last two weeks of prep is not the healthiest, but the middle of prep, you, it is pretty, you know, like you're very healthy, you're eating good food, like yeah. you're on a, a good diet, your cardio's in, like you're working out, like everything's good and you feel great. But yeah, then the last two weeks, it was kind of like, but I mean, that's a given. Yeah. You know, that's so true. And I'm curious, you mentioned earlier, like it takes a lot more for a natural athlete to uh, keep the ball Mm -hmm. rolling. And I'd love to know, like, what are some things that you do to keep your energy high? Because you push so hard. And I know, you know, I could say, I, I think every person I will be talking to pushes hard. Um, but there's inspiration in everyone's journey and struggle and the obstacles you overcome, no one knows about, right? Like when you're sitting in the sauna or when you're driving to the gym and there's a thought that's running through your head, those are things we don't know, right? So what are some of those things that keep you going in those times of trouble? Or maybe even what's something that's happened in the past where you're like, wow, I really have to push. Yeah, I would say, um, well, yeah, I take fat burners for energy. So that's, mm-hmm. that's like the most I do is a fat burner that, that you could buy over the counter. But other than that, and then I make sure I take my amino acids and I make sure I soak in salt baths because I run all the time. But when mm-hmm. I am, when I need that extra motivation and I am just feeling burnt out and just 
exhausted mentally. Honestly, I get my Bible out and I pray and I ask God just mm. to, you know, cause I can't do it without him. Like he has given me strength when I needed it and he has, you know, given me the energy. And I know it sounds crazy to some people, but you could call it universe or whatever, but you put it out there and you just ask and he'll give it to you. And I remember um, for nationals, I just kept saying like, Lord, I need you. Like, just help me get through these last couple of weeks and, you know, whatever happens, it's your will. And it kind of just set the tone, you know, cause I mm. wasn't going into the show to win. I wasn't going in thinking I was going to win. I was going in, mm. giving it my all. And I'm like, whatever happens, happens. And I feel like that's the best way to go into shows because then you don't get let down and you don't get discouraged, you know? Yeah, that's really interesting because there's so much like mindset work that really goes into a prep. I mean, aside from all the other stuff that we're doing, it's really a mental game. And I I know like when when we're approaching, we're getting closer and closer and closer, there is a lot of that content, be content with what you've done, what you've put in, know that you've given it your all. And then there is that releasing process of now we have to release this to the universe or God or to whatever we find peace in and go like, I trust that it's going to work out exactly as it's meant to. And yeah, none and, of that. Right. It's like we, if we know that we put everything into it, then we have one already. And Exactly. Nothing can and that's the beauty compare. Of bodybuilding. For sure. And, you know, that's actually like when you were competing as an amateur, you said you competed for five years. Now, that's a, a lot of people will say that's a long time. And I know for you it's a lifestyle, but what was it that needed to happen for you to finally get your pro card? <laughs> a lot of growing mentally and physically so my first show ever was in 2012 governor's cup and uh I was 21 and um I had just turned 21 too <laughs> and I had no idea about posing like I was backstage and one girl was like how's your routine I'm like what and so it was literally no like 10 minutes before I was yeah it was horrible it was just yeah I mean, it's all learning experience, but I took, obviously that was my first show. And then I took the rest of the year off, but I wanted to do it again. There was something like inside of me that wanted to be better and redeem myself kind of. So the next year I did governor's cup again. And, and I don't know, I was, it was just a, a learning experience mentally. I was growing up uh, mentally, spiritually, physically all around, you know, I was really young when I, well, I mean, there's either younger girls than me too, that are competing, but I was just kind of, I guess you could say I was kind of lost spiritually. And then when I refound myself and like started to get my life together, then everything started to fall into place. And I met my husband and then I, I got with team edge and then one thing after mm -hmm. another. And what really like changed it from being an amateur and not really placing to being a pro was kind of humbling myself, you know, knowing that, cause when I first did my first show, I, what I would go into the shows thinking, Oh, I look so good. And like really haughty attitude and just like, Oh, I, I don't, wouldn't even like myself then, you know, if I was mm. to meet her now. But wow. I don't know, I would go to the shows thinking that and then not win and be all discouraged and kind of like just bratty about it and just an ugly personality. Wow. And then uh, once I spiritually grew up and then got with my team edge, then I started really conditioning my body to how I needed to, to start winning. And then, yeah, one thing led to another. I always had that athletic athleticism in me and that, uh, I really wanted to succeed. I just didn't have the right tools in place, but everything happens for a reason in perfect timing. So there's a reason why I didn't, you know, win right away, I guess you could say. Yeah, absolutely. I think you're right on that in terms of the lessons that need to be learned. Sometimes it's even if we feel like everything's perfect, that failure can teach us so much. And I think that's something you talked about a little earlier was like when you First, we're backstage with the pros. It was like, oh my God, I feel like I'm competing all over again. So when you did it again, that's now you've learned and you've grown. So one of the main things you mentioned was that you know that 
no one's di- like we're all the same, right? There's no one that's mm-hmm. above. There's no one that is different just because of a card, right? Or how long they've had a card. It's it's just about exactly. who you are and the person that steps on stage could still take the win even if they've never done it before. And um, I think some people, and I'm curious about your perspective on this, especially as a new pro, some people will say like, bodybuilding is such a subjective sport, right? You don't, so my boyfriend power lifts and he's like, well, I can just go up there and it's my numbers, right? If I have the highest numbers, I win. It's like in bodybuilding bikini, it's like the judge is going to look at you and evaluate your physique and every single girl, you know, a lot of people say you all look so amazing. How do they make that decision? It's like, well, there's so much Mm -hmm. that goes into it. So how do you keep yourself feeling awesome about the work you put in if the cards don't fall to you? Uh, I think you kind of just said it yourself. Like, I mean, we're judged by judges. So uh, (laughs) whose opinion is it to say that one person looks better than the next when we're all pros and we've all worked really hard? And I think it just comes down to like that doesn't even matter I mean that's a plus that's like icing on the cake but we all work really hard and yes we all look really good and I think it's just the journey and I I know a lot of athletes say that like bodybuilders (laughs) say enjoy the journey enjoy the journey but it's so true and I didn't really realize that until I think last year like you have to enjoy the journey and I think that's what makes it like just winning like when you know that you give it your all and you go into a show knowing you give it your all, it makes you not even care if you win or not. And that's how I look at it now. Mm. Have you ever had moments I mean, in the course, past? Like, what were you going to say? Of course, winning is always a plus, but I mean, <laughs> once, if you know that you've worked the hardest you've ever worked, then it doesn't even matter. Right, exactly. It's like, that's a win in itself. And I know like, I went into some of my last shows like, oh, I will win. Like, I am already a winner. Like, I'm taking first place. I'm mm-hmm. taking the national qualification. I set my bar really high for myself. So when I stepped on stage, I didn't qualify, but I got first in novice. And I was like, hmm, maybe I didn't send out exactly what I wanted. And then <laughs> I was like, okay, well, I'll go get it next time. And I did. And that was cool. But it's like, there are those moments throughout the journey where we have to remember that you still put the work in, you still did everything you could. So for you looking back or even just today in this moment, were there moments throughout your journey where you kind of had to come to that realization that, hmm, I've done everything I can, or were there times where you did kind of slip up? Did you have slip ups and then regret it or have feelings where you didn't have the cards fall in your favor and go, I should have, like, are there regrets that come with it? Um, they're, they're, we're all human. And I think it would be silly to say if um, I've never cheated on my diet. I mean, <laughs> mm-hmm. come on now. We've all had a little slip up every now and then. And I think that, like, the fact that, we want, you know, we look on social media and we see everyone post all their clean foods at the, when they're on prep, but <laughs> let's be real here. We know that, you know, we're all human and we all have those temptations. And sometimes, yeah, we have a little cheat that we shouldn't have. And I mean, and, and does it happen all the time, of course, but like when I was an amateur in the beginning years, it happened a lot because I didn't really think anything into it. But then once I realized that those cheats actually do, um, (laughs) yeah, (laughs) they they actually do matter and you could see it on stage, which sounds silly because you wouldn't think like one cookie or whatever would actually really affect you, but it does draw you back from all the hard work that you were just doing. But Mm. now, I mean, you kind of, I think now that I'm older, you kind of just realize that I wouldn't say so. This last prep, all right, confessions right here, okay? This last prep, I actually (laughs) did have a cheat. It wasn't, I I try not to do it to where it's, like, really close to showtime because, obviously, that's going to affect you really bad. But if I'm, like, four weeks or plus out, and I'm not going to say all the time, it was just this last prep because I went from the first pro debut and then to this. It was really hard because, you you know, you're going hardcore 
train, train, training, then you compete. And then after that, you're going back into prep again. And it's like, oh man, I don't know how. Mm -hmm. And I admire all those girls who do it because it's so freaking exhausting. And like, I think, uh, I don't know, but I did have a pint of Ben and Gary's (laughs) and I didn't feel guilty. I was like, you know what? That's all right. I'm okay. Like I I know I'm going to kick butt in the gym again anyway. So, and I didn't do it again. It was just uh, one pint of Ben and Jerry's, but yeah, that's my weakness. (laughs) Wow. That's so interesting. I, I gotta say like, that's something I didn't know um, happened a lot in competing. Like I didn't know people actually did have a lot of slip ups like that, or that's not even a big slip up, right? Like it was one thing one time after yeah. doing another show, but you know, like I didn't realize it. And I've always been soup like in competition prep. It's like, I won't even take a lick of something. And I'm proud of myself for that. That's part of what I think is like defining of my success, right? Cause we all have our own defining success factors. But when I'm not on prep, that's kind of where I feel like struggles begin to happen where you're like, so is that still my definition of success? Like, how do I actually yeah. determine like if I'm giving my all? So for you, when you're not in prep mode, like when you're in an off season or a building time, what is it that you're determining like your success factors? How do you get through things like that and keep that high mentality? You know, it's so funny because everyone's different. And that's what I love about like just this whole bodybuilding lifestyle is that everyone's different. Like for you, you won't have one, anything out of your, you know, meal plan. And, you know, I might have one little slip up every like prep or whatever, but when I'm not on a training for a show, like I actually crave healthy foods and I don't really feel like cheating. It's like, I think it's a mental thing. It's mm. so weird. Like, I don't know. It's knowing that I can eat all the crap food and <laughs> just knowing how I feel, I don't want it. So I actually, you know, eat healthy foods and it's more balanced. However, you know, I'll have like bread but I make sure that it has like really good nutritional value in it and I'll have um some cheese like cottage cheese but it is a transition mentally I would say because you go from being this really lean little you know stick (laughs) and then Mm -hmm. afterwards you gain you gain at least 10 pounds like and that's normal and for me because I've done so many shows now I'm okay with it and I actually like myself on my off season weight because when I feel like I'm show ready I'm just really emaciated looking I feel like yeah but I I don't know that's just my personal opinion I like having the extra um cushion I guess you could say and it's not bad it's just for me I fluctuate so I probably (laughs) drop a good so when I'm full on off season I probably 20 pounds heavier than my stage weight so okay that's that that makes sense and some yeah, people and won't let themselves bad. go like above eight pounds, you know, like some people are really almost um, yeah. crazy about it to the point where they can't grow. So do you feel like that 20 pounds is like your optimum or your optimal place to grow from? Um, so now it all comes down to genetics as well. For me, my frame, I'm short and uh, like my stature is short and I'm compact and I naturally have uh, muscle. So growing is not an issue for me you know luckily (laughs) I'm Mm -hmm. actually blessed to say I actually have to slim down and watch the weight like I can't lift too heavy because I'll gain muscle too fast so I mean for me luckily I got those genetics but at the same time it's kind of like uh kind of plays against me too because my legs are so uh, bigger compared to like my upper body so I've been working on getting those things slimmed down and it's just so hard but I'm yeah. trying. Are you running a lot? <laughs> oh, I run all the time. I actually love running now. At first, when I first started it, I hated it. But now I actually enjoy it. There's like a Same. piece that you get when you... Yeah, now I, I love it. I'm like, oh, I can't wait to run. But still, these quads, man, they're so hard to get. I haven't done stairs and a back squat in over two years. And these quads really? are so... Yeah, it's been... <laughs> Oh my gosh. That's crazy. That's the stuff like we don't, like I had no idea like two years. You haven't been on the stairs or done squats. Like to everybody listening, this is like such a good learning opportunity to know that 
as competitors, especially at the elite level, when you're really trying to get the best because every detail matters, you have to give up certain things and you have to reintroduce different things that you might not like and you might not appreciate. So it's about remembering what that end goal is. So when you realize like the feedback you got and the look that you had to have in order to achieve the goals that you have, especially like now with your goal of stepping on the Olympia stage, you know, you've gotten feedback. I'm sure that is going to require some changes that maybe you haven't had to make, or maybe you have, but it's a, it's a lesson in terms of you might get into the sport wanting to look your best and do amazing, but the judges and the industry might want something different of you and you have to either accept it so you can achieve that end result or you have to say, no, I don't actually want that. Right? Like how did you, how do you deal with that in your mind? That's so true. Yeah. You either want to keep doing it or you're just, you don't want to do it anymore. You know, for me, uh, I feel like once the judges see you, they're going to remember you and they're going to see that you've worked on what they told you they needed you to work on. So I feel like that has to do with it as well. So the more they see you, the more they see you've changed and the more they'll appreciate that all the work that you're doing. And, you know, then eventually, hopefully the placings will get better and better, but I don't know. The way I see it is I love competing because it keeps me, it keeps me on a routine and it keeps me in check. So I'm not all over the place, but I just love that, that routine. And I love the grind and I love, I love being on prep. I just like the routine. I'm, I guess a type A person, but I really <laughs> like that. <laughs> yeah. I think that the routine, the routine is nice. Cause you get that, um, you get to know what's coming each day and then you get to go, okay, I'm going to give a hundred percent to each moment that passes. And there's like that expectation, you know, it's coming versus, I'm just going to do whatever comes my way today. It's like, okay, well, how is that getting me to my goal? So I think, like you said, there's different types of personalities and some people it's like, that's yeah. <laughs> like they can't handle like everything's got to be this certain way. And other people are like, I need it written down all in. Like I have a hundred questions to go <laughs> with it. <laughs> yeah. And I think as you do more shows and you learn your body, I think it gets easier because then you know what to do and you know what works for you. And, and honestly, I'm still learning about my body and I've done, you know, for five years. So, and I am still struggling. The judges still say, try to lower your quad size down. So I'm still, now I have to manipulate even more stuff of uh, workout wise to not activate my quads. So don't do any exercises that activate my quads. Wow. So I'm still learning, you know, still learning experience and you, and I think it's awesome because if you want to achieve a, a certain look and if you want your body, it's, it's like art, you know, you, we're the canvas and if we want to look a certain way, we got to go in and sculpt it. And that's the way I see it. We are an art piece and we are the artist. So mm, that's beautiful. I think that's awesome. Yeah, that's really beautiful. And to be able to see those changes and um, you know, like with bodybuilding, it takes time to make those changes to the body. And I'm learning that, um, really, really quickly because it's like, I'm like, oh my gosh, I really want to be able to see my hamstrings and my glute tie-ins. And I want to see this cut <laughs> and that it's like, oh my gosh, like it takes time to put on muscle. It takes time to develop muscular maturity. It takes time to see these things actually come to fruition. And when you're competing, it's like, it's like sculpting, right? You're like putting the clay on, putting the clay on in your off season. And then you're like, okay, I'm, I'm about ready to like cut it off, get it all nice and defined. You do that and you're like, oh, more changes need to be made. And then you have to do it again. <laughs> and it's like, and it's the yep, most minuscule things. Yeah. And it takes a lot of time. Like you said, like, I mean, unless you're doing steroids but I mean for bikini athletes I find it very unnecessary like we don't have to take that crap you know right but I mean not no judgment here you know do you do you but <laughs> it does, if you're doing it now it takes a long time like you said you have you compete and then you see what you're you know what you got going on and then you say okay I need to work on this this and that and then you have to take another you know realistically six months if you really want to put in like a good 
solid work. And then after the six months, then you got to do another eight to 16 week shred. And then, you know, that's like a whole year almost, you know what I yes, mean? Yes. While making sure the judges still are seeing you. So it's like, then it's like, do I step on stage yeah. again? Which stage do I step on? What's going to be strategic for me? Because it is, it does come down to strategy regardless of it's part of the sport. Okay. Like it's part of the sport that we love and, um, we have to accept it and it's okay. Um, but it's not something that gets talked about much because, this is just not known until you're a competitor and you want to take it to the next level. And then all those things do happen. And I actually was recently faced with, do I take six months to build or do I do eight weeks, see where I'm at and then prep and do another local show. And it's like, there's, there's a lot of thought process that goes into it. And we do have to see how our body responds. And it's, it's different every single time. It's amazing how much it changes. Uh -huh. I love that. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it really is amazing because everybody is different and what works for one person is not going to work for the next. And like, look at me, I haven't done a back squat in two years because I'm trying to get my quad size down and I, they're still big. Like I, so now I have to go mm -hmm. in and like take out some more exercises that activate these quads and see how that works. And it is all learning experience. And what works for me is not going to work for you because I'm different. You know what I mean? Yes, exactly. And, and I think people forget like the people they see online have gone through so many different things. Maybe they, they tried different diets. They tried different training regimens. They've tried all these different things. That's part of their body's history. If you just pick up and start doing what that person's doing, it's not going to work the same way. It's not going to look the same way because you don't have the same history. So that's why it ha that's also why programming has to be different. That's why we have to actually do what is right for our body. And I'm sure that's a big part of your studies now. It's like, oh my gosh, like there's a lot that goes into it. Yeah, it's really, the human body is really amazing and uh, it's awesome. And the whole bodybuilding thing is you get to learn like what makes you feel optimal and what what does best for your body and what makes you look good and and it's just awesome and then mm -hmm. seeing your training styles and you're going to change you're going to evolve from those the old techniques that aren't working anymore and you need to switch it up and do something different and I just love it it's awesome that's such that's such great insight and that actually leads me to the question that I'd love to finish off with and hear your absolute insight on which is what advice would you give to new competitors, people thinking about competing, or even a competitor who is really serious about going pro? Um, I would really look in, well, if you don't have a coach already, look into getting a coach suitable for you. So look into different teams or coaches and uh, interview them, you know, you're going to be spending the money. So just ask them how their plans work and whatever questions you have, ask them and get a coach and then stick to the plan 100%. If you really want to win, stick to the plan 100%, give it your all, listen to what your coaches say and do what it takes to step on that stage and don't give up. Like <laughs> you can do it. Like it's so for what I tell my uh, classmates, you know, from, going to school and like taking all these hard courses like and they always say oh you look so good I wish I could do that I wish I could do that I'm like if you can put in the work and get these A's in these classes you can do bodybuilding it's all mental you just mm. put in the work that's all it takes you just put in the work and do what's on your program and you will succeed you will get there but it's just all mental you got to get from one day to the next take one day at a time try not to look so forward in the future and get all stressed out and overwhelmed but just take one day at a time mm, that's amazing advice I love that that's that's so helpful and so insightful because it's easy to get ahead of ourselves or to think of the long term what that looks like and then we get scared we back out or things change and um you know like you said anyone can do it and if you really want it it'll make it that much easier yeah, like, and just make sure, too, that if you're going to compete, that you really want to do it, because if you're just going in just to have fun, then whatever, don't take so much seriousness into it. But if you are going in and wanting to win, really consider it, because it takes 
hours out of your days and it's you have to be committed it's like a full-time job so just know and understand that you're going to lose your social life or you know you're going to drop friends who you thought you were they were your friends but really they aren't and I mean I, that's a kind of a plus thing actually but, yeah, totally uh, know <laughs> that you're really going to find out who your true friends are when you compete because you know, you know what I mean? You know, because you competed. So mm -hmm. it does take a lot of time and it is like a full-time job. And just know that if you do commit yourself to it, that it's going to take time and work and hours, but it's all worth it. It's so worth it. Mm, yeah, it's totally worth it. It's, it's so rewarding. And I love that you, you had thrown that in there because that's, that's beautiful. It really is. And I'm glad that you feel that way. And I so appreciate you taking the time to come on here and share so much with the listeners. So I'd love for you to invite them to your social media or anywhere where they can connect with you and let them know, like, let you know, thank you so much for sharing all this insight and to tell you how much they enjoyed this episode. So do you mind just sharing your Instagram handle or anywhere you'd like them to connect with you? Yep, you can go ahead and reach me on Instagram at Marie underscore underscore Rios. Awesome. You guys, that'll be in the description below as well as on the show notes at www.celestial.fit slash podcast. Thanks so much for joining us today. Wherever you are in the world, make it an awesome, awesome day, night, or morning. And we look forward to seeing you on the next episode.